Tasha here, mom turned minimalist, and today I'm going to talk about why my kids no longer have a ton of toys, and also tell you the types of toys that will never find their way back into my house ever again. For my fellow or prospective parents out there, may you not make the same mistakes I did when I first popped out all the babies. See, I thought that you were supposed to have a ton of toys for your kids, cause that's what being a parent was all about. And I didn't want them to feel deprived. But don't you know, when those kids were old enough to talk, they had the nerve to tell me that they were bored. Guys, I spent good money on all the bells and whistles, but it wasn't until we actually decluttered 75% of our toys that we realized that less is actually more. And just FYI, I have listed the chapters below for easy navigation. All right, first let's talk about the benefits of having less toys around. In a study done by the University of Toledo, toddlers that were given less toys to play with found more ways to play with those toys and played with them longer compared to when they were given more choices, in which case they quickly jumped from one toy to the next. The research showed that when kids have too many toys, they actually get bored sooner. And therefore, they bother you, their parent, sooner. No bueno. <laughs> the research also shows that 62% of you are not yet subscribed to my channel. So if you like what you see, I hope that you'll consider subscribing so that I can make minimalism videos with corny jokes for many years to come. But yeah, if kids have less toys, they are more likely to use their imagination to find more ways to play with those toys. They can then play for hours on end and only bother you when they need food or water. And I guess if they are little, the occasional bowel movement. Another wonderful benefit is that your home will be way easier to clean up at the end of the day, which is awesome for the entire household. While things still get messy here and there, it usually only takes five to 10 minutes to clean up. And the best part is the kids can do it all themselves. Also, I wanna take a moment to highlight an amazing book that shows the direct correlation between minimalism and parenting. It's called Simplicity Parenting, using the extraordinary power of less to raise calmer, happier, and more secure kids. This book convinced me to downsize my children's toys, and I truly feel like our home environment is much more peaceful and happier as a result. I'll link it in the description. Okay, time to talk about the toys I will never buy again. The first type of toy I won't ever buy again are the types of toys that can only be used in one way. Because once the kids are tired of the one thing that that toy does, they are left looking for other toys to entertain them instead. Sometimes this all transpires in the span of a minute. Secondly, noisy toys and toys that are flashy are a no-go. Anything where you press a button and a sound comes out, that's a hard no. Too much constant stimulation is not ideal for the kiddos. They will come to think that they need that all the time. It's also not good for parents because it will cause us to lose our minds. Ultimately, it will just lead us down a rabbit hole of trying to find that next toy that will stimulate and entertain our children for as long as possible so we can have more time to ourselves to do all the things. However, this in fact will not be the outcome because the kids will toss them aside, just like vegetables. The third type of toy I will never buy again are toys that I actively have to set up or reassemble once they are done with them. The kids do have board games, but they need to be able to set them up themselves and tidy up after. And yes, I will play with them, but if every time they wanna play, they need me to come and set it up and do all the things and get it ready for them, no. No. If this at all resonates with you, I hope you'll consider tapping that like button right there. Don't worry, I can wait. Moving on to number four. Toys with tons of small pieces, aside from Legos. Legos get a pass because they are amazing and they can become anything that the child wants them to become. So that's cool, I'm cool with that. But when you have teeny pieces that are part of some toy set, and your kid goes and loses their special wand for the character, or they lost their hat or their shoe or something, you are not gonna hear the end of it. 
even if they're the ones that lost it. I'm just saying guys, don't make life unnecessarily difficult for yourself. Nobody needs that kind of stress in their life. No, I didn't see your princess's crown. And no, I did not eat it. Number five, whatever is the hottest toy. I just remember Tickle Me Elmo. Back in the day, there was like a black market for that. I know that ages me, but all I can say is you will never find me in line for the latest and greatest toy. I've seen the mobs on the TVs on the Black Fridays. And if I do it once, I'll be locked in to do it again and again because my kids are gonna come to expect that. I don't know about you guys, but for me, life is too short to be spent in line just to keep up with the latest trends. If there is some new dream house that Barbie has moved into, it's not gonna be in my part of the neighborhood. Number six, toys that claim to help your kids gain an edge in development. A lot of toy companies will market certain toys as educational and as toys that are gonna help your kids reach their developmental milestones. Whatever it takes to get that money out of your wallet and into their pockets. I remember buying all those types of toys and being like, yeah, my kid needs this. They gonna go to the next level because they got this toy because it's educational. And then when my kids lost interest, I had the nerve to get mad and be like, yo, I spent good money on that educational toy that's supposed to turn you into Einstein. You not even gonna play with it anymore? How dare you? I've seen it firsthand with my eldest. He's eight now, but when he was a toddler, he had tons and tons of toys and he was never satisfied. I enabled the love of new toys by trying to get the next cool toy for him that would hopefully occupy his attention. Finally, I realized I didn't want my kids to get used to getting new toys all the time, nor did I want them to think that toys are an appropriate reward for good behavior, like just being a normally good human. <laughs> I don't want to have to bribe my kids to act right, you know, because then what if they act wrong so that I will offer them something? Not having bought new toys in like two years so far has been amazing on our wallet. Also, whenever we go to the store, my kids don't really know how to ask for anything. <laughs> Both kids know that we just buy whatever's on our list and that's it. So what kind of toys do we have in the house? We've got Legos, a small amount of stuffed animals, Play-Doh and basically anything that you can create with and role play with. They also love our pillow mountain because they can build forts all day long. And you know, they have their electronic devices because that's the world we live in, of course. They've gotten a few toys here and there as gifts, but it's from family members who ask us ahead of time what our children would like. We actually have a no gift policy at our birthday parties. If you want to see how we party like a minimalist, the link is up above and in the description. So if you feel overwhelmed by the amount of toys that you have in your house, consider minimizing. Perhaps you don't wanna outright get rid of everything, but at least pay attention to what your kids tend to gravitate towards and then store the rest out of sight for a few weeks to see what happens. See if they even notice and if they don't, get it out of your house. Life is not meant to be spent managing a bunch of stuff. I personally would like to think it's more about fostering strong relationships with those who matter most to us, as well as carving out the time we need to become the best version of ourselves and reach our highest potential. But if we are spending most of our time worried about managing all the stuff around us, then we might end up missing out on all that life really has to offer. If you found this to be of value, I hope you will consider sharing it with others who might also benefit. Love you guys, see you next time.